This is a phenomenal bike ride, and I can tell you he's so casual. This is his first time he's ever biked the full 112 miles here in Hawaii. He's never been up to the turn in Harvey. He's certainly been up there today. Doesn't he look like that? We're gonna swim, bike, and run in the Utah sun. We're gonna swim, bike, and run. St. George, Utah, and breakfast with Bob and Kaimi. <laughs> Thank you, Pancho Man. Thanks, Pancho. Welcome to Breakfast with Bob, St. George edition. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spa, Zion's Bank, Quintana Roo, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Clash Endurance, Premier Plus Sports, and of course, our Challenge Athletes Foundation. Our next guest, two time Ironman 78.3 world champion. 2014 Ironman World Champion, the great Sebastian Keenle. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. How you doing, brother? Uh, really good since I'm here. Um, you love this place, huh? I love it, yeah. Uh, I always feel like I come back to where I feel a little bit like home. Yes. It's almost, it's not like Hawaii, but it's a little bit like Hawaii. It's just the same, you know, where you have the feeling your soul has already been at a place and yes. you... You come back to it, and you just don't don't need time to to settle in or whatever. Um, yeah, love it. And speaking, so your your Kaimi is nine months old. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> uh, Nino Kaimi, um, yeah, nine months old now. They're at home, but uh, yeah, constantly FaceTiming, and uh, yeah, it just. Uh, great source of joy <laughs> there's nothing better than being a dad is there nope <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool so this course you've spent some time riding running doing this area what, what do you think it's gonna be absolutely perfect stage for a world championship um i mean i'm so happy that for the first time in I don't know what 35 years uh, we have a chance to to race also on a different uh, course right and um, as much as I would have loved to have the world championships at the European country uh, I think there there I mean there there is no better better place than this yeah and when I look back at your obviously you love the big stage right so we've you've been uh, you know, seven finishes in Kona and uh, you know uh, one win two seconds, two, uh, one second, two thirds, two fourths. And if you always step up on that big stage and obviously 70.3, you've done so well too. What is it about the big stage that you like? Um, I mean, it always is a little bit extra motivation for yes. sure. Um, and I, I've, I think I've never been, uh, been an athlete who has been able to perform very well through the whole year. Right. But I've always been good at, preparing for for those you know big ones and um yeah so we'll see i mean <laughs> exactly at this venue i've never been able to perform very well on a very high level because it was always earl early and because i maybe uh, was a little bit too lazy in uh, in the <laughs> winter time and here i already always got my got my ass handed to me <laughs> and then uh, i was like okay this is may <laughs> This is where I stand, and now from here on, I have to uh, to really work. Um, but now I think I've done a lot of things different uh, leading up to the race, and I think my preparation has been pretty good, pretty spot on. In this course, with the with the wind and the heat, and uh, and obviously the climbing, what seven thousand feet of climbing on the bike, and another fifteen hundred on the run, this is a strong person's course. Absolutely, I mean, and that's also a great thing. When it comes to the to the pro man's race, um, it will be completely different to what what it is in in Hawaii. Right. I I won't say it's harder or easier. Um, it's always because of the athletes. If a course is hard or easy, you right. know, but it gives plenty of opportunity to really attack the race. Um, but it also gives you plenty of opportunity to absolutely die on this <laughs> course. So, uh, yeah, uh, we'll see. I think we, uh, we'll see some amazing performances and we'll see some people absolutely, uh, yeah, see where their limit is on the course. And I know that you like racing the best and you, you check out what people are doing. And when you saw Lionel Sanders at Oceanside and two minutes back off the bike and running his way yeah. up there, out splitting Brownlee and all the other guys, I'm sure you're going, oh, I think that guy's going to be pretty ready here. 
Uh, I didn't. I mean, I didn't need that race to know that. <laughs> um, uh, I I knew that he will be uh, will be absolutely ready. And I I mean, I'm racing with uh, Lionel for a long time now, long so time. I know I know how strong he is, especially mentally. And um, also on this course, it always showed you know he always performed very very well here in this in this race i think um i think minus the first time when he raced here probably but um i think that's that's what really matters here on this course is no matter how far you you're back you have to fight on, until the very end in in kona you know it's usually if you're fading away there's no chance of you know coming back it's the last man standing race in kona most of the times where you have the top 10 guys hitting T2, and usually out of those top 10 guys, you'll have the top five as well. Right. Um, maybe except from the years where Crowe Alexander yeah, yeah, uh, won the race, yeah, yeah. He, he came back sometimes right. from pretty far behind. But um, here, I think there's a lot of things ca uh, can still happen on the run. And um, so therefore, yeah, you have to fight until the very end. And Lionel is for sure one of the guys that will always fight, you know, um, doesn't matter if it's for the win or for sixth place or whatever. I've seen him here, you know, sprinting into the finish. He was leading by, I don't know, one and a half, two minutes. There was no need for doing that, but he just loved it, you know, and um, <laughs> that tells a lot. And uh, so, yeah, we'll see. But I think he, uh, um, he yeah, he definitely um, is one of the favorites on this course. Well, and usually you, know, you and Lionel, Cam Wirth, sort of in the same ballpark in the swim sometimes. So Cam shows up today, and, you know, I think we're chatting with him tomorrow. And obviously coming off of Paris-Roubaix. <laughs> yeah. So his cycling shape is probably pretty good. What do, you, what do you think of, of, of Cam? Because uh, he obviously hasn't done a lot of triathlons lately. I mean, uh, I've watched a lot of cycling lately. And usually uh, he was good enough to make it until the TV broadcast starts. <laughs> <laughs> so he was still in the front, which is absolutely nuts. A lot of people have no clue what that means to be able uh, to ride. And I mean, to those guys who have seen Paris-Roubaix, just to make this first split and be uh, valuable to the team in this first split is already uh, absolutely crazy. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, there is definitely, uh, um, I definitely uh, can see uh, how this race can be unfold yep. with, um, you know, two, three really strong guys in the swim at the front. And I would say that's um, for sure da um, uh, Daniel Beckegaard. It's uh, it's Alistair Brownlee. It will be Florian Angert probably. And yes. um, I don't know about the Norwegians. I mean, they uh, usually you would say like, yes, it's no problem for them to swim at this level. But sometimes they struggled a little bit actually also on the longer distances with the with the swim. And it might be that there is a second group then with Gustav Eden and um, uh, and Christian Blumenfeld. Yeah, and yeah. Christian Blumenfeld. And then, of course, and then there's the other group. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to probably be us, but um, we have some crazy firepower in this group with Cam Wirth, with probably Lionel. I mean, Lionel would probably love to not be in that group, but a little bit further ahead. But And also Sam Long. I'm, so there's, there's plenty of um, interesting scenarios in this race. Uh, there, it's going to be <laughs> it, it is going to be crazy it's so much fun to look at when you look back because you're you mentioned or i think you announced that this you, you what two more years uh, that you're thinking when you look back on your career what are your what are your favorite moments i think the and that was quite quite um interesting you know when you fly here you fly over of course first you you fly over um st george and then uh, you fly over uh, Henderson, Las Vegas. Yes. Um, we we land touchdown in in Las Vegas and then drove here. And I saw the the lake in Henderson where we were swimming at the 2012 um, 70.3 World Championships. And I think that was one of my favorite moments, you know, to win that race because there is no second first time, you know. Um, to go there and uh, to win this race without, you know, any expectations from from myself, from the outside, it was just crazy. And um, 
it's very difficult then to replicate that on any other uh, races because from there on you always have expectations and it was like that in Kona as well you know I mean the win didn't really come came as a surprise it was a surprise that it happened that year in 2014 but I mean like you said I've already been fourth and uh, third the years before so right it wasn't like a it hit me from nowhere but in vegas it really hit me like and it was just cool so that's for sure one of my favorite moments i think one of the hardest things to do in sport is when you win something to come back and do it again and when you win that 70.3 the second time that yeah. that had to be special as well yeah sure um uh, i think i've i've told that story before but i think um was it jan uh that called me a one-trick pony um uh, before the the second win and uh funny that the same trick didn't just <laughs> work again um uh, you know a lot of people said like yeah but the second time the people they won't be uh, you know won't just let you go and i'm like it's not about letting me go they just can't follow that's <laughs> that's the truth so <laughs> And uh, yeah, so it was the second time was for sure. Mm, I would not say uh, um, a little bit more satisfying, but yes, when you have people from outside telling you what you can't do and that <laughs> it's just a one-off and uh, that it's uh, by accident or something like that in triathlon, and there's no accidents, you know. I mean. No. It's very rarely that the strongest guy on the day didn't doesn't win the race. I think you're the only Ironman world champion who's racing here, right? The only male Ironman world champion that's racing here, and we haven't had a non-German winner since Freddie Van Leer, like in 2013. So uh, keeping that streak going uh, and keeping the, the German streak going, is, is uh, how important is that to you? Um, I don't really care, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I mean... It would be uh, it would be absolutely awesome for uh, for the sport in our country for right. sure. Um, but for me personal, it doesn't it doesn't really matter that much, um, you know, if it's a German winner or not. Um, but yeah, for me personally, yes, it would be <laughs> it would be great. But uh, I think it's gonna be yeah very very difficult. Um, most likely, we don't have a German winner, but we can probably keep the Kona Street going street going <laughs> exactly uh when you with the you know with the course here and with the the depth of talent obviously jan isn't racing and patrick's not here and joe skipper does that change the way you approach in terms of when when guys you you just do you look at how the different scenarios because this is really a besides a strong man's race because the way this is going to play out it's a thinking man's race Absolutely no, definitely. I am. I'm looking at all the the guys Everything. and uh, you know trying to uh, have an idea what they gonna do, what I will do, and and so on, and how uh, how I can approach this uh, from a tactical standpoint for sure. But um, would it is it changing my uh, tactical approach because of Jan and Patrick not racing? I don't think um, too much um, because the they would have added. Uh, something mm -hmm. to uh, group one and two what I would have in my mind but um, at the end I, I won't I don't think that it would have changed too much until the marathon probably and I think the the, the field is still like really really strong so when you won in 2014 when you won the world the Ironman world championship 2014 how did that change your life or did it yeah, of course it did. I mean, in a, in a, in a lot of ways, um, with this, um, you know, success in sport, there comes financial success. And with that, um, uh, it come, yeah, there's more freedom, you know, um, for sure. So that, that definitely changed. And then on the other hand, um, I have to say it's, it's just in a very good way, you know, uh, it's not, um, not like you you score a golden goal at the soccer world championships right. and everybody knows your name overnight and you can't go to the supermarket anymore or something like that that's not the case it's just uh, in a very nice way you know the people who really know they know you and they appreciate your performance and so on and you get respect which feels very uh, of course which feels good um 
but it's not like somebody's flying the drone over my garden to <laughs> take pictures of my baby boy or something <laughs> like that and sell it to some uh, random newspaper or whatever. So yeah, it's uh, just uh, just good changes mostly. You have accomplished so much in your career. What what do you feel is left? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a long, long time since I last won um, the world championship. So. Uh, of course, it would be absolutely crazy if I would win another title. But um, other than that, I'm I'm really uh, really happy with my career. You know, I've already achieved pretty much everything I've I've dreamed of. Right, especially for a one-trick pony. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the rodeo with the one-trick pony yeah, on I Saturday. We got the one-trick pony who's going to be kicking it out of the park here on Saturday. Sebi, as always, thank you so much for taking time. You're welcome. Pancho Man, We're gonna take us out. We're going to swim, bike, and run in the Utah sun. We're going to swim, bike, and run in the Utah sun. And breakfast with Bob and brother Kaimi. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Pancho Man. Hold on, everybody. We will be right. <laughs>